Welcome to Essential Ingredients. I'm Justine Reichman, your host today with me and back at Essential Ingredients for our follow-up is Jake Carls, Rainmaker, co-founder of Midday Squares. Welcome back, Jake. Oh, I love it. I love, I always love coming back because that means, that means with, that means something's do something's going right. And it means there's something more interesting to talk about. So I always evaluate my podcasts on if I come back or not later, whether it's a year or two years later, or even months later. So I'm pumped. Me too. And you know, we follow you. We watch your posts. We watch the news. We keep an eye out on what's going on. And I'm so excited to hear if you could just share with us some of the, maybe the top three things that have happened since the last time we chatted. Well, yeah, so we definitely, we've had tremendous growth in the United States. So where you are, um, the brand is actually exploding there from actually higher growth than in Canada, which is kind of cool. Um, that's number one. Our team has grown tremendously in terms of uh, individuals and skills. You know, I think we're at, we're at 70, we're going to be at 70 by the first week of January, which is quite, that's a big family for us. And, and, and I think humans make a difference in a business and without them, we don't have that business. So that's that. And then third, um, I would say we're finally getting our groove in, 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 in business after three years of being in business, we finally, my two partners and I feel really good about what's to come and how big this can be and how much, how much excitement we actually have. 2021 was a really rough year from just like structural foundational stuff and just emotional drain of ups and downs. So this 2022 is, is a really exciting for us to actually come in bold, go hard as hell and just, just go out and win and have fun with it. Wow, that's exciting. And so what do you what do you see for 2022 as Midday Squares expands? And for those that are tuning in for the first time and didn't hear your first interview, can you just give them a bite-sized insight as to what Midday Squares is? Yeah, yeah. So Midday Squares is what we like to call the first functional chocolate bar. We're a modern day chocolate company and every product we make is functional and it's an indulgence. So we use real chocolate and we took a real chocolate bar and we took a protein bar. We made love with the two but we got rid of all the junk that's in protein bars. So the artificial flavors, the additives, the preservatives, the chemicals, and most importantly, the chalky taste. And we wanted to just redefine the way that we eat chocolate bars. No longer do we think that you should just have those candy bars, but you can actually have something that's also indulgent, but that carries you right through the afternoon, gives you natural boost of energy. And uh, yeah, I like to say we're having fun with it. Call us the modern day Willy Wonka, if you like. I like that. I do like that. So... For 2022, what can we expect to see for you guys? Yeah, so 2022, you're going to see a lot more distribution in the United States. So for we are focusing now on opening up more natural stores in the U.S., so focus on premium and natural stores first. Then in, in September 2022, we are opening up nationally across a massive retailer. I don't want to say the name yet, but it is a retailer that everyone goes to. And um, we're also, we're, we also are reforming two of our products. So we're reforming the almond and the fudge to be even better than they currently are. So I'm super excited for when that launches in the first quarter of 2022. And we're about to go on a journey where we're scaling from that, that, that I would say startup to maturing company in the sense where our team's building, we're hiring a lot of executives, a lot of people that have been there, done that type of thing, but with the magic that Midday Square's mindset has. So being authentic to who we are and staying true to our core values. And I think a lot of companies forget about that as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they just go through the bureaucracy ladder. For us, we're really focused on building a massive family here, making a difference. And the way we want to make a difference is spreading positivity. Uh, and good vibes. And it sounds cheesy, but that's who we are. And we dance, we laugh, we go crazy and we make people feel something. I love that. And I think it talks a lot to the core and the values that you have as an individual, but also the company has. So I got to ask, I've watched um, a lot of the videos that have come out and I've read a lot of the press and you guys have made a lot of really interesting choices uh, to stay um, private. You've been approached by different people to and you've made choices not to take money and can you talk to me a little bit about that that was yeah. a hard decision or was it really easy for sure so for us we got approached in late 21 2021 sorry mid 2021 to be acquired by a large chocolate conglomerate that you know we all know uh, an american a big american chocolate conglomerate and 
we actually rejected it. Um, our goal, the three of us, our goal is not to sell the company. We feel like we could build this to be a modern day chocolate conglomerate, just a new way of doing it and building that impactful in size. And then a couple months later, we actually got a uh, season's assist and letters legal from this team after rejecting them for our packaging. They, they claimed we were infringing on the color that they own the color orange. And um, they had some other stuff, 32 pages of evidence of consumers saying our product's a healthier version of their product, which is actually just, it is actually, but it's not the same as the product. And then we had to rebrand our entire packaging and it was a crazy journey. You can watch the video on Instagram or LinkedIn, but it's, it was, it, we repackaged our product in three weeks, which is quite crazy yeah. to actually do. And then, yeah, for us, we, we did have to raise financial, uh, we did have to do a financial raise recently, um, but that's just for growth equity. That's not to, you know, sell the company. And for us, our goal is potentially to IPO one day. Uh, I don't know if no one's allowed to say that, but yeah, where we want to take it potentially public one day because we want to we want to really engage our community. We want to allow our, t our 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 customers, our fans, to be part of this from an ownership level. Um, and there's no better way to do it. And I think that that's something that you know we're trying to gun for and we're trying to really get to. But um, there's a lot of noise out there in the food space. A lot of acquisitions, a lot of mergers, a lot of financing, a lot of capital injections. Um, and we just block it out. We literally just block everything out. Good for you because it really allows you to stay true to who you are. Are you currently looking to raise money? So we we're, we're, we just signed a term sheet last week. Um, so we're in due diligence right now. Um, super great fund, um, super great humans behind it. They are based in the U.S. Um, they're super amazing. They believe in manufacturing. They believe in building this to be the next Hershey's. And for us, that's what we could. We couldn't have asked for a better partner in that sense. And I think a lot of the time in the venture world, you find people that want a quick buck or, or partners that want to get in and out. And the, the, you then change the way that you start focusing on your model and your business. For us, we've made it very clear to any partner that joins us is our mission is our mission and we're staying put to it. We're staying true. It doesn't mean we're not going to optimize and make things efficient and all this stuff. But the magic comes from the three of us. My partners and I, we want to build a company a certain way. And we really believe you could do it by build, being unapologetic for yourself every single day and not not following the mold. I don't believe in conformity. Whenever we're on the side of the majority, Justine, I think that we always stop and reflect because we don't we don't want to be on the side. We actually go the opposite side because those outlier decisions will allow us to have an outlier outcome. I think that's great advice for other founders listening and other people building businesses because it's really a unique unique and new way of looking at building a business in today's, in today's world. I think for so long, people were trying to hold everything very close to the vest and not about transparency, but about keeping their ideas very, very close to themselves because somebody else would redo it. And in today's world, we're really all about being transparent and open and sharing and working together. So I love what you're doing. I love what you're building. I'm excited to continue to watch what you do and be a platform for you to share more as you grow. Well, we, have, we appreciate you even letting us share. I think, I think you nailed it. I think transparency and authenticity is the new currency. So if you don't figure that out, you won't be able to get the purchases because consumers today want to understand what the brand's about. They wanna understand the humans. They wanna see the humans behind the brand. They wanna know more. They don't just wanna care about the product in itself even though I think it's super important that you have a great tasting product and that's number one. But number two is really create an emotional connection with your consumers, make them fans, make them want to cheer you on, root for you to win. Because when you do that, that's when you build real brand equity that's worth, it's priceless, it, you know, because these big brands, these big bureauc bureaucracy companies, they can't do it. They can't figure out how to be authentic and transparent because the ladder doesn't allow them to do it. The bureaucracy is very hard. The red tape has judgment, right? And I think that for us, you know, I swear on camera, I swear on television, it's not out of, out of negativity. It's, it's just passion that's coming out of my mouth. And I'm not scared of it because it's who I am, right? And I think more businesses need to start being themselves. And even if it, if it doesn't work out because of that, if that's why I failed is because of being me, I'd be proud to be honest, because at the end of the day, then it wasn't for me to continue doing it, right? And I think more businesses and individuals need to start doing that. And I'm starting to see on LinkedIn, just and, and Instagram, a lot more people trying to be authentic and it's actually refreshing. It really is. It's like a breath of fresh air because everyone was just originally, like you said before, a facade. It was always like perfection or facade or this or that. And it was like, 
we need to change that. And I'm no, I'm no, I'm no like revolutionary person, but like information evolves and humans evolve and the world evolves. So brands need to evolve as well. And I, I I'm excited to see the next five, 10 years of how brands in the food and beverage space specifically um, change their ways or they don't change their ways. I'm curious. I couldn't agree more. And I do think that, I mean, even I remember 10 years ago and 15 years ago where everybody was really trying to tell half of the story and it, you create sort of a facade that doesn't really breed trust and authenticity because you don't feel like you're, you feel like you're always missing something. And when you're missing something, you don't feel like you got, you have the whole truth. And when you don't have the whole truth, you don't create trust. So it's a cycle, right? It's a cycle. And so by being honest and showing transparency or being transparent, there's a lot more that we can, we, we trust. We relate to. And relate to. Really and trust. Exactly. And so by doing that, you know, you create rapport, you create a relationship and you can have a relationship to the company, to the person, to the product, and you believe. And so, and also it allows us by understanding that to be able to really understand what it is, the product, what the product is and what it isn't. And so I think that's revolutionizing what we're building as a food system as well. Because people for the first time in a long time are actually starting to understand a little bit more about the food system, what they're building, how it's impacting themselves, their health, the environment, and what we're building for, the, for our children, the future. And so I think it allows us to really have an open conversation about that. So I, I think it's just, it's a new, I hate to use the word paradigm, but it is, it's a new paradigm that we're entering. And I think that the way that you're doing it is just really open and accessible for so many. And I hope that many people will follow suit. Trust, trust is the key word. You lose the trust of the consumer, it's not coming back. So by opening the door and being accessible and being transparent, you're creating trust. Exactly. And, and I, yeah, I think that's, that's the answer. And any brand that's listening or any individual, just be authentic and, and be yourself because people like that. Someone will love it. Yeah. And it, it's, you can't do the right thing for the wrong person or the wrong thing for the right person. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Jake, you thank you that. so much. Thank you thank so much you. for joining us, for giving us the update. And uh, how can everybody get a hold of your product? What's the best place? So you can go to our website, middaysquares.com. And if you want to find the store locators, you can check the store locator page to find a store. It's always located in the fridge of the store, which is important. And if you want to buy on Amazon or our website, we do need to see as well right to your door. Um, but either way, we're happy for you to even just check us out and, and join our community. Join our roller coaster ride of our story. We like that. Awesome. And uh, thanks again, Jake. I hope you'll join us again. Keep us posted on what's new at Midday Squares and follow your journey and follow our journey. And we'll follow your journey each week. I love your support and, a lot, and I appreciate you even taking the chance to allow me to speak. So it means a lot. Likewise. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I want to thank our listeners and uh, everyone for tuning in today to catch up here with Jake to see what's happening at Midday Squares. Thank you. To find out more about this episode of Essential Ingredients and access show notes, check out Next Gen Chef and choose podcast in the menu bar. If you like this episode, head to iTunes or Next Gen Chef's YouTube channel to subscribe. Learn more about Next Gen Chef, the platform that powers this podcast, by checking out our website or visit us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Next Gen Chef. You can also check out my Instagram at Justine underscore Reichman. If you have thoughts about this episode or future episode ideas, leave us a comment at Next Gen Chef's YouTube channel or drop an email at team at nextgenchef.com. Thanks for joining us.